What can you do with the original Raspberry Pi in 2018? Yes, I know 2018 is coming to an end, uh, but I guess this video can also apply to anything following. So, what can you do with the original Raspberry Pi from 2018 onwards? Hi guys, and welcome to another Nintendo video. In this video, I'm going to talk about a few things that you can do with the original Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 1. So the question is, what can you do with a Raspberry Pi 1 in 2018? Well, there are many things you can do with a Raspberry Pi in general, um, not just the Raspberry Pi 1, but the, the Raspberry Pi 2 and the Raspberry Pi 3, and the different variations between the models. There's many things you can do with them. I purchased my Raspberry Pi 1 back in 2011, um, when they first released. Back then, there wasn't too much available in terms of what you could put onto them. Um, I merely just purchased mine just because it was a cool little computer. Um, at that point in time, I didn't know what the hell I was going to be doing with it. Uh, I just liked the idea of a small form factor PC the size of a credit card as they were explaining it at the time. So the longer the Raspberry Pi has been around, there's been more and more images and operating systems available for it. When I first started, I basically tried out RetroPie because uh, I was into basically playing retro games. Uh, I, I already have my own consoles uh, and things like that, but I just liked the idea of having something so small and being able to fit all your favorite retro games onto it. So that's what I started out doing. Um, the first RetroPie image that I had um, was very, very slow and very flaky on the Raspberry Pi 1. Um, for myself, I found that you had to overclock it a bit uh, just to get a little bit smoother gameplay out of it. Um, but then again, this was back when it first came out and the image was brand new, so a lot's improved since then. Even though the images for RetroPie and other available uh, images like Recalbox and Laka, um, even though they've improved, um, I still find that the Raspberry Pi 1 is still pretty limited in terms of what games you can put on it. Uh, it handles a lot of the old games perfectly fine, like Super Nintendo, Nintendo, and Sega, um, anything like that. But some arcade games it won't handle, and Nintendo 64 it won't handle. So I, I, I was kind of stuck with what I should do with it. I picked up a Raspberry Pi 3, put all my retro games on there. Um, that's running Recall Box. You can see my short video on that um, on my channel. I'll pop a link in the description. Uh, but basically, the Raspberry Pi 3 is essentially all you need to run your retro games off of a little small form factor PC. The Raspberry Pi 3 supports many consoles, um, but it handles the arcade and it handles Nintendo 64 a lot better than the Raspberry Pi 1. The Raspberry Pi 1 didn't even support the Nintendo 64 as far as I'm aware. Uh, I could be wrong, there might be, now there might be things available to allow it, but I know that the images I had, they just didn't support it. So having a, a Raspberry Pi 3 and having all my retro games on there, um, just as a little portable gaming system, I kind of didn't really have a use for the Raspberry Pi 1 anymore, but I didn't want it to go to waste, so I've been looking and looking at what I can do with it. I don't even have a case for this thing um, because it was a little bit odd shaped um, compared to the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, you had a little RCA component video, whatever you want to call it. Um, that was sort of hanging out of the board a little bit, so it, it just doesn't fit nice and snug like the, uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 and all the cases that are available for that. So basically, here I am with a Raspberry Pi 1, not knowing what to do with it. And then I found a, an image um, for a media player or an audio player, whatever you want to call it. That software is called Rune Audio, and I'll put a link in the description for that one. It's basically just a media player for your Raspberry Pi that you can install um, and play music off of a flash drive, your home network, um, or even just web radio. Just gonna show off Rune Audio in action. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a small portable speaker plugged into the headphone jack on the Raspberry Pi, and an ethernet cable plugged into the Raspberry Pi. Um, which is hooked up to my network. 
that's how I can access my music uh, on the Raspberry Pi through Rune Audio. So on the on the mobile here, you can see Rune Audio. Click on that. That opens up the Rune Audio web interface. Try and put this as close as possible so you can see that. Now down the bottom, you can see library, playback and queue, and there's no song currently playing at the moment. Uh, and then you've got your stop, play, back and forward buttons at the top. So what we're going to do is click on library, and there is a few ways to, uh, to listen to music. Um, the one that I use here is the network mounts. Um, as you can see, I've got two folders listed in here. One is the Lintendo folder, which I created just for this video, and then my usual music library. So what we'll do is we'll click on Lintendo. And as you can see, I've got a few songs already listed in here. And basically, got a little menu here where you can add the song to the playlist, add the song to the playlist and play it add replace and play it update the folder or save to bookmarks I'm gonna hit add and play click on playback and you'll see there it is um, now I think the audio is down a fair bit so you can adjust that go ahead and adjust that down so you can hear me speak um, so back into the library I can add some other songs to the queue just got some Battletoads songs here and some Bubsy if I click on playback now um, it's gonna finish the song and then go on straight on to the next one um, and it's a pretty responsive uh, switch over there's no pause um, between switching songs um, on its own or even when you skip ahead yourself. So you can click on the Q button down the bottom here to see what else you have in the queue. You can hit the X button to remove things from the queue. I'll go back to playback just so you can see it. And at the top here I'm going to hit next. And as you can see, it basically changes almost instantly. Now you can get um, you can get pictures to shop in here, like album art and artists. Um, that for some reason just won't work for me on the Raspberry Pi one, and I don't really care too much about it. Um, I just like to be able to play my music um, and use my mobile to add things to the playlist and change them, skip songs, etc. So if I go back to the library, go back. Now you can have a USB storage device and cap and listen to music that way. You can have web radios, so if you've got some favourite radios on the web that you normally use. I've got a few already listed in here. Uh, some may not work, um, but we'll give one a go and see how we see how we go. All right, we'll go ahead and skip uh, trying to play some web radio. Um, it does normally work, um, I know that it, it is a little bit hit and miss with the Raspberry Pi 1. I haven't tried this out on the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, long enough to, to test all of that. Um, but uh, yeah, it, I have had the web radio working on the Raspberry Pi 1 before. Um, but for some strange reason, uh, it just doesn't want to do that now. 
So basically you've got a little menu button up the top here where you can click on playback which is the screen you see behind. You can go to your sources and add in your add in your music etc. Your network sources. MPD configuration. Uh, so you can change where the audio output comes out of, um, volume control, a few little other settings. I don't really mess around with it too much. Uh, some people may want to change this um, if they've got uh, additional audio hardware plugged into the Raspberry Pi. You've got your general settings over here. So you can see the host name of the Raspberry Pi, which is just called Rune Audio. The OS settings, etc. Location, nothing too, nothing too drastic. Um, network settings, debug credits, and from here you can also turn it off or reboot it. Now you don't only need your mobile to get into the web interface; you can also use your web browser. As you can see here, I've got Chrome open um, with the web interface uh, at the very top. RuneAudio.local uh, is the device. Um, now you don't need to put in the host name like that. You can put in the IP address if that's all you have. You get the same thing basically. Um, this is basically what I had on the phone. Um, it was just the web web version um, through Chrome. But it works the same from Chrome on your web browser on your computer. Uh, so you can come along and you can't right click, um, you just need to remember to go over to the far right hand side and add music from there. And you can adjust the audio. Or skip and it works pretty quickly just like uh, just like it did on the mobile and that's pretty much it um, there really isn't much else to it uh, like my, my uh, the reason I like this is um, it gives me a use for my Raspberry Pi 1 which previously was just sitting around in a drawer uh, not getting used so this is a great use for it um, some people do get custom cases and uh, touch screens and they get their own audio hardware as well that they add on to the Raspberry Pi um, but I think I'm just going to get a case for this one and have it plugged into the network and hooked up to a speaker and just use it for small purposes like that. Later on down the track I would like to get a, a custom case and a touch screen um, and then you can have all of that on the one in the one unit basically uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to go into details on how to set this up um, there are a few other videos and forums online so definitely check those out um, this is more just to show what you can do with the Raspberry Pi 1. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Post some comments down below if you have any questions. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but I'm not too experienced uh, with this particular OS. Um, I just know enough to get it set up the way that I need. And that's enough for me. Thanks for watching.